name is Kav and I tried to kill myself. That was a horrible way to start this video and I sincerely apologize but I literally had no idea how to start this video because I am incredibly uncomfortable and I feel super awkward right now so I just decided to dive headfirst right into it. I am sitting in the corner of my room which is where I filmed my hiatus video which I also felt extremely uncomfortable and awkward filming so this is now my token spot for videos I don't want to film so that's exciting I guess but what I said is true in the intro that happened, I did attempt suicide, and I am going to be talking about that in this video. I guess what I should start with for this video is a major content warning because obviously this video is going to deal with what could potentially be some triggering content. I'm going to be talking about suicide in this video, potentially depression, self-harm, trauma, I don't really know what it's going to cover. I will have a list of what potentially triggering content this video covers in the description below so please read that and care for your mental health first take care of your mental health because i don't want to potentially cause anyone any harm that is by no means my intention with this video so just take care of your mental state know what headspace you're in because you deserve to consume content that will benefit you and that will do good things for you. Now if you are in the right headspace, I would really appreciate you watching this video because while I know it is going to be somewhat of a rambly mess as I am very uncomfortable and I feel super awkward filming this, I also feel they have some important things to say because I have a lot of thoughts around this topic as someone who has a lot of experience with it but obviously that is only if you're in the right headspace if you feel that this content will trigger you take care of yourself first that is most important but if you're on the right headspace i would appreciate you sticking around and watching till the end of this mess of a video because even though i haven't filmed it yet i know it's going to be a disastrous mess i don't really know where to begin with this video my last video was a video that addressed my unofficial hiatus from booktube and I I call it an unofficial hiatus because I never intended to take a break from booktube, it kind of just happened, hence why the video came at what was intended to be the end of the hiatus. It didn't end up being the end because it is now a month later that my next video is coming out, but I feel that this is a relatively good excuse for me not having posted another video, so I'm gonna let myself call this an okay excuse. You know, I feel like this is a decent excuse. But what that video talked about was the fact that I was going through a really major depressive episode. So I feel like a lot of that will help explain what led up to my suicide attempt, but it doesn't get to all of what I want to talk about in this video because obviously in that video I didn't know I was gonna attempt suicide. I've talked about mental health before on my channel because that's stuff I live with in my day-to-day -day life. I have multiple mental illnesses so I've made content about that. And I've also talked about my first time attempting suicide which was when I was 14, about to turn 15. It was like a week before my 15th birthday that I first attempted suicide and that was essentially just a case of self-harm taken too far. I'm not gonna really talk about it any more than that because I don't think it's really appropriate to talk about the methods of suicide. I personally don't mind talking about it with like close friends and stuff but I don't want to give anyone who may have suicidal thoughts any like ideas or potentially trigger anyone. We're not gonna 13 reasons why this shit so I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff in detail. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I blacked out and it got messy. Let's just leave it at that. What I just want to make known about that attempt is that it wasn't premeditated because I don't think that I've revealed that on my channel and that's essentially what I want to share about that attempt because it gets into what I want to talk about about this attempt because this one was premeditated. I attempted for the second time on February 10th. Like I said, that was a premeditated attempt. I technically planned it out the night before but I've dealt with suicidal ideation since I was 12 years old so like I've come up with plans multiple times in my life. I've never acted it out until now. Lately, when I've had suicidal ideation, all of the thoughts I've had have essentially led up to what created this plan for this latest attempt. I did write a suicide note, it was four pages long, it was hella long, it covered a lot of ground. It was like a monologue of why I wanted to kill myself. So I have a lot of thoughts 
on suicide not just as someone who has been suicidal but just also as someone who has seen a lot of people with mental health issues and who has studied psych to an extent as someone who is an activist i have a lot of thoughts about this kind of stuff and then especially as someone who has been suicidal i especially have a lot of thoughts about this stuff and that's really why i wanted to make this video it's not to harm anyone it's not to trigger anyone and it's not really to necessarily teach anyone either it's to be honest about my own story because i need that to help myself and it's also to potentially help other people who are in the same place as me because what i faced as someone who has attempted suicide is that it is really fucking lonely yes i'm very lucky that there are people in my life who want to be supportive and who want to help Help, but it is a very small club of people who get this and of course you never want to wish anyone to understand what it means to truly understand suicide like you don't want anyone to understand it but at the same time you want people to understand it and it's a horrible situation to live in but essentially what I really want to do is hopefully lessen that loneliness for someone else and make them feel like they're less alone in this world and maybe someone out there will reach out to me so I'll feel less alone in this world and that's I guess kind of more what I want to accomplish with this video. I want to talk a little bit about how I felt leading up to the attempt and I don't want to talk about that because I want to make anyone who's in my life feel bad because I want to talk a little bit about my emotions in terms of other people and I really want to emphasize that I'm not trying to guilt trip anyone at all. That is not my intention and I'm not even saying that what I felt was rational. Depression brain, even like emotional brain is not always rational. Your feelings aren't always rational and feelings aren't necessarily right or wrong. All I am saying is that these are the feelings I felt. I'm not saying that they made sense. I'm not saying they were necessarily correct. I'm just trying to express that this is what I experienced. I'm not necessarily saying that this should make anyone else feel bad. I'm not saying that these feelings necessarily even make sense. I just want to put that out there because I don't really want to make anyone else feel bad. I'm just sharing my feelings, that's all. Leading up to my attempt, I really truly felt like no one would miss me if I was gone. In the very core of my being, I felt that. That's rough. I think a lot of that stemmed from the fact that I felt like no one was reaching out to me because personally, I felt like I was screaming out for help and that I was not getting any responses in return because I was posting posting shit on Twitter like in the middle of the night and I was like I'm really depressed that's not essentially what I was saying but I was basically saying stuff that kind of signified how bad I was doing and no one was reaching out to me so in turn I felt like that meant no one cared about me now logically I know that a lot of people scream into the void on Twitter and a lot of times people just yell on Twitter that doesn't necessarily mean that they're truly doing so bad but my depression brain doesn't understand that so I felt super lonely and then especially like when I cross posted those to my Instagram stories and no one there really reached out to me it just felt so lonely and it felt like no one cared that's truly how I felt in those moments even when I could logically understand that okay maybe on Twitter people just scream into the void and it becomes a cesspool of a bunch of depressed people just yelling then I wrote my article that was about my depression and this is an article that I wrote for brown girl magazine which is a magazine I write for it was an article that was essentially about living with depression essentially the gist of that article was that I feel like I'm never gonna be out of this and I'm pretty sure the last line of that article is something like I feel like I'm living my worst nightmare and I feel like I won't ever wake up or something along those lines even after that article barely anyone reached out to me and that made me feel really shitty because I could maybe logically understand that okay people on Twitter might not reach out to me because we're all yelling about being depressed on Twitter but I went out of my way to write this article that was me really trying to scream for help and when no one reached out to me I felt like that truly meant I was alone because that was me attempting to scream out for help now does that mean that I was asking for help in the right ways does that mean that nobody truly cared no I'm not saying that it was rational thinking I'm just saying that's how I thought and I posted that article everywhere I truly do believe it was an important article and I'm really proud of myself for writing it and I posted that article everywhere like I also posted it on my Facebook and my snapchat where I generally don't post anything I did that because I wanted my friends and my family and such to see it as well. Only one family member reached out to me about the article and that really hurt me. I expected more people from my family to reach out and when only one family member reached out, I felt honestly like I had been punched in the gut and that was 
really hard for me because there were like some cousins and stuff in my family who I felt close to who didn't reach out after that article and I don't know maybe they never saw it maybe they never read it I don't know the situation but in that moment when I was super depressed when I had gone out of my way to post that article everywhere I felt even more lonely that's just what I'm trying to express I'm not trying to put blame or guilt on those people at all. I'm just trying to express that in that moment, because of where my brain was, because it wasn't functioning rationally, that's how I felt. I really struggle with asking for help. I struggle with going to someone and saying, I need help. So instead, what I do is I go to something like fucking Twitter or Instagram or something, and then I like post some weird cryptic tweet that's like, I'm really depressed. And then I expect someone to reach out. And then when they don't, I'm like, oh, no one cares about me. And instead of like actually just going to a friend and being like, yeah, so I'm not feeling too hot right now. Would you mind talking to me? Again, I'm not saying that that was rational thinking at all. I'm just trying to express that in the moments leading up to my attempt, even though it wasn't necessarily necessarily the right way, I felt that I was making attempts and I felt that the people in my life weren't meeting me halfway. And because of that, I felt like no one would care about me if I was gone. But then on the other side of that, there are also the thoughts of like, well, I'm a burden for having mental illness. So then on the rare occasions where like, there were people in my life, like my sister and stuff, who did reach out to me and who did care, my thoughts were like, but I'm a burden for having mental illness. No one wants me in their life. They're better off without me here. That's such a weird fucking dichotomy to live in. Like, no one cares about me, but also in the moments where they do care, I'm a burden for existing. That's a horrible dichotomy to live in because you can't exist in either side. It's like you're just swinging from both sides of the pendulum and it sucks. Then there was also just a huge sense of hopelessness. I have been in treatment since I was 14, since a year before my first suicide attempt. I started treatment at the beginning of high school and I have been dealing with mental illness since I was like, I don't know, 10 or something. I am now 18. I've been in treatment for almost five years. I've been dealing with this shit for like eight years now and I'm still dealing with it. Leading up to this attempt, I just felt really hopeless. I felt like it wasn't going to get better. I've been doing it for so long and I've been putting in the work. I've been going to the therapy. I've been taking my medication. I've been doing the work, but it's not getting better. And that's how I felt. And it just felt so hopeless. I mean, it was exactly like what I wrote in that article. It felt like I was just existing in this nightmare and like I was never gonna wake up. I felt like I couldn't live like that anymore. I mean, also living in this world is really fucking hard too because even living in this world can feel hopeless at times. I mean, if you look at the political state of the world, it is so jarring to exist in it. And that in itself is enough to make someone hopeless. And then you throw the mental illness shit on top of it and that just makes it so much harder. And that's kind of what I was going through. There was also just so much pressure coming in from everywhere. I felt like there was all this pressure on me to be okay. I felt like there were all these expectations on me to be happy, to be okay, to succeed in college, for everything to be fine. And it wasn't. And I didn't know how to deal with all of that. I felt like I was supposed to be okay and I didn't know what to do because I wasn't okay. I couldn't handle it anymore. And so, I snapped. And I feel like now, on the other side of this, it's almost harder in a way. I feel like people almost want me to be better, but I feel like it's harder to come out on the other side. I feel like people's expectation is that suicide is a wake-up call, or that you're like, oh, I'm so grateful it didn't work, and now I'm thankful for my life, or something like that. But that's... Mm, that's not the reality. Just because the attempt didn't work doesn't mean the factors that made me want to take my own life just disappeared. They didn't just like fade away because the attempt didn't work. They exist just as much as they did before. And now I'm here living a life that I didn't think would exist. That's a hard thing for even me to reconcile with, let alone like the people in my life. Like how do you live when you didn't think your life would be there. I didn't know today would be real, like what do I do with it? Sometimes it feels like there's even more pressure because people are watching me even more now that they know and it's like, oh I have to get better. With all that pressure on me, that's what was part of the problem. Like I said, I have a lot of thoughts about suicide. There are all these thoughts about safety 
and I have a lot of thoughts about them. And it's not that I don't understand that safety is important, because trust me, I understand that safety is important. I 100% get that. But I feel like in this society, we have a tendency to care about suicide when the act happens, but we forget that there are the things that led to the person wanting to kill themselves. Yes, we need safety. In the immediate aftermath, safety is the priority. But what we really need to go after is why did that person want to kill themselves? Why do we live in a society that is driving so many people to this point of wanting to take their own life? Maybe that's what we need to be fixing. Part of what I wrote in my suicide note was that I felt like there were going to be people who were going to turn well, what I thought was going to be my death into their tragedy when they were never there when I was alive and I was suffering. I felt like I was screaming when I was suffering and I felt like there were gonna be people who were gonna be like oh this person killed themselves and now that's my tragedy because when I was suffering it was fine because I was suffering in silence and it didn't matter it only mattered when I tried to take my own life and that's how I felt and I'm not saying that that's 100% accurate but I do think that to some point that's how society sees suicide because we see suicide as this weak or cowardly thing but it almost feels like it's the only option or the last resort or an escape from a world of pain and that's not true it's not logical and it's not true but that's how people in that moment see it we need to instead change the system so that people aren't driven to that point we need to make it easier for people to live happy fulfilling lives so that they're not suffering and so that they're not suffering in silence if they are suffering they need to be able to find access to the resources to help them and then to have access to a happy and fulfilling life yeah the number of people who have attempted suicide it is an elite club of us but it's getting bigger and i'm one of the lucky ones i have access to treatment i'm in treatment now i'm taking the rest of this academic year off of college and i'm in a really intensive treatment program that is basically offering me every kind of therapy modality it is hell because recovery always gets worse before it gets better but i'm still one of the lucky ones because at least this means that I have a chance of getting better. But there are so many people out there who don't even have access to regular therapy, let alone something this intense. It really breaks my heart and I fucking hate the system. I mean, I was put on a 5150 hold after my attempt because I was taken to the hospital. The nurses, the doctor there were great. They were all brilliant. The psychiatrist there was absolute shit. He was so horrible that I couldn't even imagine it. I had mentally prepared for a not good psychiatrist because I know that the psychiatrist does these kinds of hospitals generally aren't very good, but I wasn't expecting someone that bad. I couldn't reconcile with how bad the psychiatrist was. While I know that there are so many issues in the mental health care system, I mean in the healthcare system overall, I was so shocked with how terrible that psychiatrist was, with how he spoke to me as a patient who had just attempted suicide, and I'm so grateful that I have a good treatment team, both within this new treatment center I'm in and within my other outpatient treatment team. I'm very fucking grateful that I have them. If that had been my introduction to care for mental health, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah, I don't really know how I'm doing right now. I'm in intensive treatment, so I'm basically just... Jesus! Bye. <laughs> I'm basically just exhausted at all times. Like I said, recovery always gets worse before it gets better. I'm very thankful to have access to this treatment, don't get me wrong. I am so, so, so grateful that I am one of the lucky ones who has access to not even treatment, but to such good treatment. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for my treatment team. They are all brilliant, but it is going to be hard and I'm still struggling and I don't really know, man. As for booktube, as I said in my last video, I had a Chain of Gold series planned. That is still happening. It's not a month long series, but there are three Chain of Gold videos at the very least that I have coming out over the next week. My current plan is to do Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday for these three videos. And depending on how things go, I may very well do more Chain of Gold related content because I love Cassandra Clare. After that, I don't really know how booktube is going to look. I'm going to try to challenge myself to film because I love YouTube. I love booktube. BookTube. It's very close to my heart. As you all know, I love my channel. I love booktube. It's very important to me. This 
ending of this video is getting so messy because the fact that my battery is about to die is stressing me out so much and I cannot concentrate on what I'm filming and my cat is meowing like hell so that's also distracting me. I'm gonna end the video. If you stayed through this rambling mess of a video, thank you. I really appreciate it. I don't even know what's just happened. If you're one of the people who has gone above and beyond to support me during this time, if you have reached out to text or DM me or if you've really gone above and beyond and those of you who did that know who you are thank you from the bottom of my heart really really thank you you guys are fucking stars and i love you so much all of you who have been supporting my channel thank you all of you who have been supporting me on my other social media thank you i love you you guys make the world a brighter kinder place and you make it worth living and with that that is all for this video i will see you on wednesday for some cassie claire related content and goodbye